Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Scott, here with me, Mr. Kevin, Kevin. Hardy. Mm -hmm. We're gonna spend some time today uh, talking a little bit about something that was kind of a, I guess a big blurb in yeah. the news yesterday. I would say a little bit unexpected. I know an email went out and I was like, I think I got 10 minutes notice before the Twitter spaces sure. came out. I logged in, it was partially going. But anyways, those are listening, right? Elon Musk and Jim Farley hopped on a Twitter space live discussion to make a pretty big announcement as far as we and everyone are concerned, sure. I would say, uh, with some news about their shared kind of partnership that's intended to help accelerate uh, EV, EV adoption. Yeah. So there were kind of two big things that came out on the call. For those who haven't listened, definitely check it out. Uh, if you're a fan of awkward starts to, to virtual calls, it is definitely that. Um, <laughs> but hey, it was cool that they did it live. Uh, but two big things happened, right? So one, they said that starting as of early 24, 2024, uh, all Ford vehicles, all existing Ford vehicles are going to have access to Tesla's existing supercharger network, right? So 12,000, at least 12,000 yes, different superchargers. Um, and that was, so that's existing vehicles with CCS1 ports via an adapter. Correct. So that was a big deal. They talked a little bit about how they're going to achieve that. The other big thing that happened, and we'll elaborate on this a little more, but the other big thing was that Ford said that a year later than that, so early 2025, not only are they going to be charging at Tesla state supercharger stations, right. right, but doing so with the NACS, the North American Charging Standard, which before it was called that was just the Tesla charge port, sure. right, the Tesla interface. As we know, we've talked about it on this channel, Tesla came out, they made it known that they were opening that up for consideration, asking people to consider adapting it as the standard for North America. And now Ford has stepped up to the plate and, and done it. So yeah. I don't know, what was your take when you heard this, Kevin? I mean. I, was, I wasn't really surprised. Um, I, I think when I talk to anyone that is even remotely thinking about an EV, especially if it's not a Tesla, mm -hmm. the, their biggest hesitant, is, hesitancy is, is the charging situation that sometimes exists with other, we'll say other platforms of charging. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as this happened, I kind of sent a press release to some friends that were thinking, he's like, yeah, this just made a, a Mach-E like way more feasible for me. You yeah. know? So a lot of people I think that were maybe on the fence, really interested in EVs, maybe push specifically if you're looking to consider a Ford EV going yeah. forward. So, Especially, uh, yeah, if they, if they had some reason that they didn't want to have a Tesla, but they sort of concede that Tesla had the best charging experience yes. for the customer, that barrier ostensibly is no longer there for yeah. Ford customers. So a couple key things to point out, though, with regard to that were, so in the short term, to address all the existing Ford customers and EV owners on the road, they're going to have an adapter uh, that said that they're working on development, that's gonna be available for purchase in early 2024. But I, I think it's important that we talk about how this differs from the magic doc thing that was yeah. discussed. So I don't, Kevin, maybe just summarize, I know you and Antonio talked about it, but how does, how does the magic doc set up? Yeah, so essentially, you know, there's gonna be retrofits for, for, for certain Tesla superchargers, essentially like a large block that's in there and for vehicles that require it, I think it's like electromagnetic lock, mm -hmm. but you'll be essentially, it's a, an adapter for the, the NACS Tesla, um, charge port plug here. And then, um, you know, a non-Tesla vehicle would come up, go through this, through an app uh, that Tesla has, uh, you then, you know, would indicate that you want to charge your vehicle, yep. plug it in and then run for that. Yeah. So that's kind of a, it's, it's relatively elegant compared to some other adapters that sure. you have to use, whether you're using a Tesla to, to uh, CCS or anything like that. Um, but, but with the magic doc, you still, you still are going through Tesla stuff and it's not as seamless as the Tesla Correct. setup is if you're just plugging. Yeah. Tesla, I mean, it's, right? it seems like it works pretty well, but I think the, the intent with this announcement is, you know, Ford owners will be able to essentially plug their vehicle in just like Tesla owners will be in charge yep. relatively seamlessly. So. Yeah. So instead of having a, a, an adapter that's tethered to the station, right, which is the case for the existing magic docs and the fact that, right. Most of the superchargers out there don't have that. They're systematically retrofitting some of them. Some of them. But what's key about this announcement is there's going to be an adapter that Ford owners will have. So you can pull up to any Tesla supercharger that, that's out there right now, put that adapter on, go up. And then the critical thing was Elon said that they're going to be supporting in terms of software and yes. API to make it such that it's a seamless interface. What was critical is that Elon noted that they're going to make sure that the infrastructure side, so their station is not gonna be the limiting factor, and that the only limitations to charging speed will be on the vehicle side. So they're gonna let people charge at their, the max potential of what that vehicle will allow. So very cool there. Um, in terms of the, the other big thing then that happens, um, as far as the adaptation of the NACS, right? The North American Charge Standard, that is a big deal because that now starts changing vehicles, right? Sure. And so I think we, 
wanted to maybe show some parts just to speak. Again, I know we've showed this before to kind of reiterate. So a Tesla charge interface, the NACS, uh, this is what the port looks like on the vehicle. That's kind of the guts of it removed. That one was from a Model S. Uh, we have kind of a hodgepodge here. This was from a Model Y, but you know that covers it up. So essentially your only exposed portion you're seeing right there, and that's handling both AC and DC are coming through that. And here's what it looks like on the other side, right? So this is a Tesla, uh, you know, the plug that goes into that, right? Now on the flip side, the CCS1 combo that is standard on all other vehicles in North America, you've got separate ports for AC and DC. And when you want to do DC fast charging, you've got a pretty large cable that is, you know, maybe kind of akin to a conventional fuel pump handle, right? So, I mean, I think when they're talking about the size differences and for consumers, the difference, like this is substantial, right? You can see the difference in size, the difference in weight, the difference in flexibility of the cable. I think anyone pulled would rather use this than use this. Um, some other differences with the interface has to do with how it locks and the number of moving parts. Something that does, or people have had issues with at charge stations is that the thing that locks, the mechanism that locks into the charge port is on the vehicle side, or I'm sorry, on the infrastructure side. So if this clasp breaks or something, it now is gonna maybe cause the whole charging experience to malfunction, it's not grabbing on. On the Tesla ports, it's kind of the inverse, right? So you've got no moving parts on the plug, they've got a, a detent or like a gap here that's being uh, grabbed by the mechanism that's on the vehicle side. So again, if you talk about wear items and things that can potentially break on the Tesla charge uh, plug, they've put that on the vehicle side. So, you know, it's going to get fewer cycles in that way and less prone to break. So again, all about improving that experience. This episode of Monroe Live is brought to you by Joa. Joa is the world's leading provider of Tesla accessories, brought to you by a team with over 15 years of experience, engineering highly specialized accessories for automobiles, power charging, and lifestyle. Joa has everything you didn't know you needed for your Tesla, like these all-weather floor liners that are the perfect fit for your vehicle. The anti-skid backing with hook and loop fasteners won't block the accelerator or brake pedal making for a seamless addition to your vehicle. The foldable car tray is designed to fit the Model 3 and Model Y front seats, providing a comfortable space for working or mealtime. The foldable hinges makes this feature easy to open and the foldable function allows for easy storage in your frunk. The tray also fits perfectly into the all-weather trunk liners, which have raised edges to help protect your storage areas from dirt, mud, rain, and snow. Created for Tesla owners by Tesla owners. These products are developed by the Joa team to enhance your Tesla driving experience. View the entire catalog of Joa products at joalife.com. And for a limited time, use code MONROEJOA for 5% off your order. I think something that we've mentioned before, right, there are cost differences and advantages to going with the NACS. And so people have asked us to quantify that. And I think if you just looked at the, at the ports, you only get like a portion of the story, right? You'd say, hey, you know, this is plastic. It's about yay big. This is plastic. It's about yay big. I don't understand how that's such an advantage. But the, the mystery or the magic behind it really is in how that flows downstream. So with Tesla, they're going through a single, uh, single interface here and they, tied to the back side of that with two bus bars, two rigid bars. And we have these, this was out of the Model S here. Um, so on the back side of that charge port, we have one of them cut up, which we'll show you a cross section of, but essentially that goes in to the leads on the back side. Um, the inside of that, if we look at a cross section, so it's essentially an aluminum bus bar. This is rigid, it's got some shielding, but they're sending their AC and their DC through two uh, aluminum bus bars. Um, where conventionally, the, like the flip side of the coin, right, would be if you're looking at a CCS1 option, almost all these that are out there, they have three high voltage cables and you've got one that's going to your uh, onboard charger. So your AC charging would be going there. And then you've got two leads that go uh, usually straight to your battery, your DC fast charger. So these cables uh, conventionally are all copper, uh, shielded copper cables, so heavy gauge, um, and then the shielding adds some cost too. So when you look at the difference in cost for copper versus aluminum, aluminum, you do have to grow the section in size yep. to get the same properties. 
but um, looking at the way essentially two instead of three and then having a cheaper material to do it, this port enables Tesla to get creative with some of the rest of their charge uh, harness assembly, right? So when we talk about some of the cost advantages, uh, I've, you know, it's gonna depend on the volume, the adaptation, um, and what's going on downstream in the, in the OEM vehicles that might adapt it. But it can range from, in our estimates, 10 to 30% cost reduction for this whole assembly uh, versus this, if they, like I said, were to go full Tesla style, have the NACS port and the, the aluminum bus bars and integrate in a similar fashion, whereby AC and DC are going through the same leads and they're basically quarterbacking it downstream. Um, the other thing though that I do just wanna clarify, so I think I saw some people say, oh, this is great. Ford on their, on their second gen EVs are gonna add uh, an NACS port alongside a CCS1 port. And I just wanna say, definitely not gonna be the case, right? It's gonna be one or the other. The quote from Jim Farley was, we are totally committed to the NACS moving forward. That doesn't mean they're gonna have both. That means that moving forward, they'll have just the one. And I would say, if you had two, all the advantages we just yeah, spoke about go would away. go away. It so. would get more complex, heavier, more expensive. So f future Ford vehicles will have just this port. They're not going to have both. Uh, and when they have that, um, you know, there's some other advantages too it could open up. And Kevin, I wanted to relay it to you for some of the charge port too and creativity as far as packaging. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll see what the commitment to NACS means, you know, yeah. and if we end up with something akin to this, mm -hmm. and maybe now because of this deal, uh, you know, Ford gets access to suppliers, and then there may be some volume incentives for both Ford and Tesla mm -hmm. as some of this stuff kind of increases. Um, but one of the, the big things you look at here is, you know, this is the, the charge port door cover. I don't think this is the correct vehicle orientation. And that orientation. was from the Mach-E, right? This is from the Mach-E, right? Um, and one thing that's interesting is I think there's a lot of ceiling requirements and some functional objectives here that are probably pretty significant, which is why there's um, such an increase in overall size around the, the adapter itself with the Mach-E. Um, but you know, Tesla's got, I don't even know how many vehicles on the road now. So they have a lot of data available that they can share yeah, as far sure. as yeah. their interface and essentially this style um, of cover, which is um, a little bit yeah. more minimalized. But one of the, the big advantages I, I see, you know, especially maybe to, to design teams is, you know, this is a, a much smaller interface that can be hot, hid behind other things that you're already buying. You know, this is essentially an extension of a um, body-mounted headlight. We're here on the on the Maki. We have a. It looks like a, a conventional fuel door, right? 100 percent. Yep, and uh, and it's it's sequenced and painted to match the body. And there's, you know, th those numbers vary. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes OEs get hit really hard on sequencing from suppliers because essentially, you know, this assembly is going to be built up, painted offline and not with the vehicle. And you don't necessarily get the advantages of painting the entire vehicle together at the OEM with their rates. So I, when I look at this, I, I think you can start hiding this behind badges. You know, if they decided to do like a two dry, a two door Mustang, sure, you, know, you sure. can hide this behind a badge in the, the taillight panel or something like that. And you might be able to cover this charge port. Um, because it is smaller uh, than the the CCS port, sure. With other things that the the always already buying, or at least already offering the customer. So. Sure, and it is worth pointing out. I think others have noted right in Europe there is a CCS two port that does fit into that that envelope. So people can get creative and try and stuff it in there. I will say though, again, just the the elegance of the number of cables. We know Tesla's done it; they've gotten it into that location. But Kevin, I think to your point, maybe starting to move away from this idea of having it like a fuel door that needs to be painted and needs to be sealed in all this certain way and maybe taking a page from Tesla's playbook that says, hey, let's not make it paint specific and have to sequence it yep. and let's bury it in an area that just allows us to have the same assembly. Uh, this was like a reflector that's the same on any colored vehicle, right? To have that to where you can just buy millions of the same unit and not have to worry about um, it sequencing and being unique. There. Yeah, so. the, the irony is this is essentially in some ways, legacy automotive with internal combustion. Yeah. And then this is kind of what you think of when you think of EVs, you know, orange cabling, lots of cabling. And then this style is very reminiscent of essentially a, a stamped fuel filler tube <laughs> off of any gas tank. You know, it's rigid, it's yeah. self-supporting. And you can see just the, the difference between, you know, harness shielding, the zip ties and things of that nature. So there's some ironic approach to it, but it's very much akin to an ICE vehicle fuel filler neck. So. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, this is a big deal, right? Um, I think it surprised a lot of folks. Yeah. Uh, Ford and, and Tesla said that they have been in discussions about this for a while. So, you know, it's neat to know that it was something that they've been working on. I would suspect this will probably drum interest from other, other folks who are now asking, right? Because the question comes up, 
well, great, now what charge port should we use? Moving sure. forward, should other people focus on CCS1 or should they use the NACS? I think this definitely pushes the envelope to now where other people who may have said, no way, we're not gonna use NACS. There's definitely a lot of meetings going on today if people aren't already sure. starting their holiday asking that very question. So I, can, I would expect there's gonna be a lot of interest and it may lead to a situation where CCS1 just phases out, and really this does truly become the North American standard. I mean, I could definitely see it on the eve of Memorial Day, you know, and all the traveling. You go down the turnpike, and there's, you know, 15 or 20 supercharging stations, you know, there, you yeah. know. So, uh, at all these kind of planned points that people stop at throughout their route uh, as they travel, so. So I guess we'll conclude with, with an ask. If it was your charging experience, which one of these would you rather, <laughs> rather manage to get in the vehicle? I think I know. I don't know. Anyways. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Don't hesitate to reach out with questions.